Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and today we're going to be finishing off my cave base on Ragnarok. We need to get things secure here before we jump into Genesis 2. And I'm just incubating some wyvern eggs just here. Managed to do it through the air conditioners by stacking them. The vanilla ones are just not powerful enough to do it. And oh, I've also put a picture up here, of course, of the event that we did with Bunner. If you haven't seen that episode, go and check it out. It was a lot of fun. But today, I want to get this base finished off. Now, I like having them two entrances up there, so I want to leave it. But I also need to get things more secure in the base itself. So I've got a rough idea, but we're going to really use the cave and the way it's built as to make our base, build our base out of the cave itself. So I'm going to use the ceiling of the cave and let's just grab some foundation posts because I'm not sure where I'm going to put the large dino gate. Now I'm thinking if we stick it here, it's probably a bit too far forward, but we could just have a look, see how it looks, how tall it is and where the wall is. So I might need to go a little bit further back from here and perhaps line it up. Let's start with by doing a wall in this corner. So I haven't really got a rough idea, having lived here for a little while. Of course, I'd usually built my base a lot quicker than this, but we've just been on the Herbie Island and things have been pretty well locked down. Okay. So let's get a wall coming across here. Things are starting to take shape a little bit more. Okay. And I can replace this with windows. I think this foundation is slightly different to that one. Some of these foundations I had to eyeball as they wouldn't quite clip. I might end up using greenhouse windows. But yeah, I can see there's a little gap there. You can see I had to eyeball that. So maybe we'll use some pillars, a foundation, a fence post foundation and cover up that gap. Just get the front put on, see where we are. Yeah, don't like that gap. Okay, so we put a fence foundation back here, and now we can clip. There we go, we'll just put the stone pillars up this way. So it's helped cover up that gap a little bit. kind of mirror that on the other side. Okay, so I'm not sure how tall to take this because I might want a sloped wall coming back into the cave. Perhaps four is enough. Maybe four high, as high as the dino gate. And then perhaps we'll put a ceiling across so we'll have a sloped ceiling. Oh, our dragons are ready. Nope. Of course, I've already got my perfect pair, but I'm just looking for a mutation. Okay, a couple of fence posts in here, and that'll let us clip our dinosaur gate in. So fence posts are really handy. I've been able to create another snap point. And there we go, so we can clip that onto the end now. And yeah, I think I'm going to have that roof sloping into that. I may even bring this forward. Because otherwise we're going to end up with a square build. So let's try making a little entrance. So 
out. It's a little bit boring just sticking the dinosaur gate in like that. So we're going to make a little kind of porchway. We just need to make that. No, two. That might be a bit too far. Yeah, perhaps we'll just come out the one. Let's like say I've only got a rough idea for what this is going to look like. And I guess we're just having to work with the cave here, so. Lost a couple. I think bringing that out by two is a little bit too much. So again, let's get some fence foundations and make another snap point and put the door on the end. Dead simple trick. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks more proportionate to the size that we're building in. And of course we just need to come back this way. I'm thinking in this corner where I'm currently standing is where my forge will eventually go. The industrial forge. It's working quite well with the small forges that I had because there's plenty of metal at the top of these stairs. So just come up four high here. I'm going to replace some of these for greenhouse windows. I think this looks like it's going to work. Yeah, so if I get a slanting roof coming down on it, and then perhaps I'll put a different style roof on the porch way, going the other opposite direction. We've got plenty of space over here to land our dinos. So I'm back and it's a couple of days later and I just wanted to get a short video out there just to take you round my Ragnarok base because of course we're going to be playing Genesis 2 for a little bit so I wanted to get you all caught up on what the Ragnarok main base looks like before we jump across onto Genesis part 2. So I've managed to get the chemistry bench down and I've chosen the chemistry bench over the industrial forge because I still need to get a few more materials together before we can put that one down. But this is how the front looks now. And managed to put the slope roof on and give it a lick of paint. And of course we can just come in and land down here. I can do some breeding outside. We've got a water pen to do some breeding as well. And this is eventually where the industrial forge is going to go because it works quite well there. And we've got plenty of metal at the top. Brontosaurus outside making a noise but yeah I'm kind of happy it, it sits into the back of the cave we're kind of limited as to what we can do in here and utilizing the space is what I really wanted to do and we can still do that on the outside so I can continue breeding outside there and of course managed to get a few pieces of furniture down and if we just come outside here, you can see what I've been taming over the last week when we've been jumping on. So starting off with, we've managed to get our Wyvern. Of course, we've got Sabo, and he was the first Wyvern we've got. But we've bred that with a couple of other Wyverns. Got our perfect Wyvern. In fact, I think we just took um, the weight from Sabo. And then we got a weight mutation on this one. But as you can see, 38 in stamina. 36 in weight, 34 melee, this is 38 in health, so that is a really, really strong lightning wyvern. Uh, I've got a few dodics here, haven't given them a name yet because we need to breed some, so I've just picked up this blue one which had reasonable stats, um, but I like the colour, so maybe we'll breed that back, I don't know. Um, we've got a few different ones here. I'm just going over with the numbers so you can see the one at the end here has definitely got the best numbers all round but if we can get an imprinted dodic that'll definitely be better than the one that we've been currently using. And uh, I do like the blue. Maybe we can use that somehow. I don't know. The tech parasaur. 
Now this one's got 40 points in weight, 42 in stamina, 48 in health. So it is a good tech parasaur, but they're not much good for anything apart from harvesting. But hey, I grabbed it anyway. But we have got ourselves a griffin. Now I think this one was a 145 and it's come out with reasonable stats, 45 in the health. 43 in the stamina now of course we can't breed griffins they are a non-gender creature and originally they were just exclusive to ragnarok so in this case we can't really breed it any further but they are extremely useful and i will be using it quite a bit i'm sure they're good for taming other creatures and just generally getting around the map so i'm going to go with the patron naming rights tier and billy b Thank you very much for your support. In fact, Billy, I'm sorry it's taken a little while to get to you, my man, but you've been a supporter since pretty much I've begun the patron. But uh, there we go. We finally found you an in-game name. So, Billy B, you're the Griffin. And, of course, there are a useful creature for getting around the map and taming other creatures when it comes to your rifle. You've only got like a 180 degree view but you can land of course but it's handy being able to shoot from its back and of course if anything's higher than you you can sort of land on the ground and shoot upwards quite easily and yeah definitely makes taming things a little bit easier and just getting around the map as well with its speed just come down here you can see yeah it's just a, a really useful creature so Billy B it is and I guess we need to get ready to wake up on that spaceship. I needed to get all of my base locked down. And uh, I'm going to cryopod these creatures because, of course, we will be coming back to Ragnarok. I'm going to be using this as my main community map. And I'll be doing more tutorials and guides. And I want to come back and do the caves and complete our way through it. But, of course, we do want to get back to Aberration and things have been on a little bit of a standstill while we're waiting for Genesis Part 2. But that's about to drop and we're going to be doing a little bit of content on Genesis Part 2 before we continue with the Aberration series. But we're always going to be dropping in from time to time on Ragnarok and at the moment this is what the base is looking like. So thank you very much for all of the support. Don't forget to look out for myself with all of the Genesis 2 content coming out very soon. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.